विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, <coughs> our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Jai Swami Narayan. As we continue our journey with Nilkan Verni in his adventurous journey around the lands of India, we learn different virtues of what he displayed on this earth as per taking a mere human form. He had two hands, we have two hands, he had two feet, we have two feet, two eyes, two ears. But there was a great difference that only those that he wanted to show or display understood. He had a very frail and thin body and he traveled around India with very little possessions. Yet, it seemed like he was, and right now we can say he is the king of the world. Let us continue his journey as now he comes to a very well-known place in India that many, many, many devotees visit. Swami Narayan Hare. After tracking and overcoming many obstacles, Nilkin climbed at a height of 12,500 feet and reached the pilgrim place of Muktinath. Nilkin did the darshan of the Murti of Muktinath. He selected a place at Pulhasam to perform his austerities. Pulhasram was a secluded and an extremely beautiful place. Here, Brahma's son had performed austerities. Milkan Verni, though only 12 years old, began his austerities at the same spot where Bharat had perfor performed his. You know, the other day, uh, about four or five days ago, Puja Guruji and Santos, about a couple miles down here, um, Duke's Parkway, it's a, it's a park, um, and Guruji's like, let's go for a walk with Santos. So the weather was a little bit colder than usual, about, I want to say, 20 degrees. And there was uh, very high winds at that time, about 15, 20, 20 mile per hour winds. And Guruji and Santo were walking, and Guruji was saying that Nilkan Verni, in his time, about 200 years ago, was pretty much ha did not have any clothes and he was walking in this kind of a cold weather even much colder for our benefit even by thinking about Bhagwan's daya or compassion in this manner we can at least be very thankful of what we have received here in the form of facilities in the form of AC heating, lighting, this kind of uh, insulated shelter, you can say. We can definitely understand and comprehend and appreciate that Nilkan Verni did everything for us. So all we have to do for him is follow his commands by reading the Shikshapatri, by understanding his principles by reading the Vachnamrut and living such a life that he can when he sees us, he can be very, very, you can say, grateful that he did the austerities at that time. So that paid off, and these kinds of ekantik bhaktos are made now. 
But that can only be done if we think back. And that's what Guruji was showing us in the park. He was saying that if you look back in Nilkanvarni's time, he was doing the same thing. Learn to look back and see what Bhagwan did for us. In the same manner, that same exact area, Puja Guruji, Muktinath, visited many times. And there, he also, Puja Guruji, even in the year of 2016, when Puja Guruji went to uh, Pulhasram there, he suffered much cold. But he wanted to show those bhaktos that came with him from the United States and different countries that Milken Verney did this for us. So we should be thankful. Nonetheless, we should pay homage to this pilgrimage. Moving on. Milken Verney, though only 12 years old, began his austerities at that same spot where Bharat had performed his austerities. Now think about it. Even right now, there's many, many people performing tap, meaning fasting and everything. But how many do you hear are fasting at such an age of 12 years old? How many, and fasting, meaning Bhagwan did not drink or eat anything, Bhagwan did not drink anything, he completely lived on air at some times in his life. Not for one day. Anyone can do it for one day or two day but for an extended period of time. And from that very, you can say, that moment that he did this, until this time right now, we still remember him because he was Bhagwan himself. Not only Bhagwan, and I repeat this many times, if we look at the credentials of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, from his time from Gansham Maharaj, Nilkan Verni, Sajan Swami, and Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his phases in time for that 49 years, and we take all of his credentials, we take all of the things he did on this earth, each and every action, and we exactly compare it to other avatars or incarnations of Lord Krishna, Lord Ram, so on and so forth, we can see why Bhagwan Swami Narayan is called Autari or Supreme and outweighs the other incarnations. Only, this is a simple principle, only when something, suppose you have a very nice apple in your hand, okay? Now, you're only going to look at it and you're going to say that this is the best apple I've seen. It's very, it's big, it's shiny, and it's very nice. But, you can only realize the maima or glory of that good apple when you compare it with a bad apple or an apple that's a little lower. You understand? Only when you say, ah, oh, this apple is good, but it's not as good as this one. This apple has a red color, but this apple has a better red color. This apple is medium in size, but this apple is bigger in size. When you compare that's the only way you can differentiate and tell the greatness of one from another. It works in the world the same way. You can say that if you buy something from Best Buy and you go to buy something from the dollar store, there is going to be a difference, correct? Difference in quality, difference in price, difference all around. In the same fashion, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, when you take him, take what he has done, made six temples himself, what he has written, the Shikshapatri himself, the principles that he has shared, the Vachnamrut, he has initiated over 2,000 santos in his time, at that time. And what kind of santos? Those who were kings before, those who were great, great leaders, those who had a, sta a status in society he turned them and transformed them into sadhus who performed tap he transformed in them into sadhus who stay away from money and women for life sadhus who never get married sadhus who perform such kind of austerities compared to him sadhus who had such kind of power yet displayed great great humility that when you say and take all this and you compare it 
with other incarnations, you're able to tell, you're able to comprehend that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Supreme Lord. And even at the age of 12 years old, as Nilkan Verni, that was the only way that he performed all this stuff was that he was supreme. And he displayed it here in, in his acts, you can say. In the Vachnamrut, Gurdada, last chapter 30th, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that I like one who endeavors in austerities, yoga, vairagya, developing an aversion towards the panchvishes in order to please God. Without any form of doubt, seeing such a person, my mind becomes pleased and I feel he should be congratulated for behaving in that manner. Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that I am very happy. I am I feel like congratulating such a person that performs such kind of tap or austerities. I mean, you're probably wondering for those majority of the crowd that are watching um maybe in high school or maybe in college or even middle school that how can I perform austerities or tap to please Bhagwan? Well, in one month there is two days which are called ekadasi. By eating farar, you don't have to completely fast if you don't have that capacity. By taking farar once, meaning fruits or those kinds of foods that you can eat on ekadasi, that's considered tap. Outside of that, when you're eating some food, you intake a little less, you don't fill your stomach completely, that's considered tap or austerities. It doesn't mean that you have to do chandrayan or dharna parna or you have to do multiple fasts. That doesn't con completely consist of doing vrat or, or austerities or tap. But Bhagwan is saying the very reason why to do tap is to control one's indriyas or to control one's senses so that one can engage in the form of Bhagwan. That's the whole purpose behind Bhagwan. Uh, pretty much putting so much weight on performing austerities. It was the rainy season, and the young celibate began his austerities despite lashing rains and cold winds. He held both his hands high and stood up in one leg. on one leg. You know how in puja we do tapni mara, where uh, both of our hands go up, we have a mara on our right hand, and our right leg goes over our left kneecap. Such is called a tapni mara. We perform this tapni mara in the memory of Nilkan Verni when he performed this exact tap at this time in Pulhasram. In his remembrance, we do one tapni mara. This is the reason why we do it. So Nilkan Verni started this. He held both his hands high and stood up on one leg. Over his head was a large knot of matted hair. His body was thin and fair in complexion. He fixed his gaze on the tip of his nose. He was heedless of hunger and thirst and exposed his body to the elements. The austerities went on unhindered and soon it was reflected by, the, by his body being completely worn out. In the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that I wish to please God by performing austerities. Furthermore, even if it takes one life or two lives or a thousand lives, I wish to please God only by performing austerities. Now Bhagwan is stating here that I want to make Bhagwan happy by performing thought. This is a statement here, but there is also other ways to please Bhagwan by associating with his, with his ekantik sat purush, by performing such kind of satsang, so on and so forth. But in this time, Bhagwan is saying that I like one who performs tap or austerities, and as Hindus, as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, we should definitely according to the Shiksha Patri, abide by it by performing two ekadasis in that one month. Nonetheless, if we can do more, we can do Harijainti, 
and so on and so forth according to one's capacity. But as a follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and as a Hindu, one should at least perform two ekadasis in a month. There were many yogis and munis staying in Pulhasram. They were astounded to see Nilkan's austerities. They used to come and see him in the morning and evening, but he was absorbed in austerities, meaning he did not come to talk uh, and say, Oh, come on, how are you doing? What's your name? No, none of this. Completely, Bhagwan was engrossed in his own self in, in the form of performing austerities, and he had no attention for anything or anyone else. The rigorous austerities exposed every bone in his body. His veins were also visible. Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut, So after many spiritual endeavors in Karyani 3rd chapter, I made my body so much so that when someone or something pierced my body, water would come out but never blood. In this manner, one who is virtuous can be known from his childhood. Meaning Bhagwan is showing Arpuja Guruji, even at such a small age, when he became a sadhu, he tells us the story of how Dada Guruji, you know, he could not do upas at that time, Guruji, when he became a sadhu at probably the age of 16. So what happened was Dada Guruji, what he would do, he, he would, in the morning he would say, don't take breakfast, go do some seva. Then I'll give you something in the afternoon. Then when it became afternoon around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, Guruji would come to Dada Guru and again, Guru, Dada Guru would know that he is hungry. But to help to see or to help practice Guruji doing upas, this is what he did. Then Dada Guru would be like, oh, wait until 4 o'clock. I'll give you something else. Don't worry. Do, go do bhajan or go do sevan. At 4 o'clock, again, Guruji would come to Dada Guruji. And again, would be like, and Dada Guru would know immediately. And he said, don't worry, wait until 8 o'clock. I will give you something at dinner time. And again, at 8 o'clock when Guruji went, Dada Guru said, oh, it's only now four hours away. Why don't you wait until 12 o'clock at night, do puja, and I'll make you something. And we'll serve it to Bhagwan, and I'll give it to you myself. Da, we can see this as a charitra that Dada Guruji helped Guruji perform one upas. But that same Guruji in his life multiple times, now, even 10 years ago, I remember, performed Dharna Parna for one and a half years. Performed Dharna Parna for one and a half years, 10 years ago. And just a couple years back in 2016, perform dharna parna again for more than one year how could he do that at such an age at 14 or 15 he could not even do one upas but at the age of 60 he is able to do a year and a half of dharna parna it's something that shows that guruji is not from this world but is beyond this world and in the same fashion nilkan verni performs such kind of tap for all of us and Guruji does the same. The once tender body became immaculated. The yogis and the munis thought perhaps Narayan himself has come to perform such severe penance. Every day they came and knelt before Nilkan and prayed, O oh God, please bestow upon us the virtues of Vairagya and austerities. Dharmadeva and Bhakti Mata appeared in the sky on either side of Nilkan in their divine forms protecting him. Oh, enough, enough, dear child, they prayed. Even Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh came for his darshan and to attend him. Nilkan spent two and a half months in austerities and on the morning of the eleventh day of the bright half of the month of Kartik, Surya Narayan, the sun god, appeared in human form before Nilkan. Nilkan happily requested him Kindly grant me a boon 
so that I may retain my vow of Nishtik Brahmachari and have your darshan whenever I remember you. Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut that in order to please God, Naraji performed austerities by enduring cold and heat, hunger and thirst for many yugas, and due to this, he was able to please God. In the same way, a person who is wise performs austerities by restraining his body and indriyas. Thus a sadhu who is wise should also perform and suffer and make the body suffer and the indriyas suffer. This is more for sadhus, but we can definitely understand that Nilkan Verni did this for us. The whole base of this lecture that all of you should grasp is that he performed such kind of tap just so that we would become happy in this world in the future. He had nothing to do. He was God himself. He could have came here from Akshardham and enjoyed luxuries of the world. He could have had everything. He could have had all the land. He could have had all the money. He could have had everything he wanted. But we saw in the future or in the past, Alexander the Great, he conquered 70% of the world, all of the land. He had all the money he wanted. He had everything. Yet, at the end of his life, at the end of his life, what he said was that, I have nothing and I could take nothing with me. But Bhagwan himself showed that it's not about having possession. It's not about having everything in the world. It's not about having property or possessing anything. It's all about letting go. And this is what he displayed in his phase years of Nilkan Verni between the age of 11 to 17. After he got to Lodge and after he became Sajan Swami, the head, the ruler of the Swaminarayan Sampraday, then he completely turned modes. He completely changed his ways. He accepted everything that Bhaktos gave him. May it be gold, may it be ornaments, may it be food or anything. Why? To please that devotee, to make that devotee happy. But in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan states that even till right now, I still have that inside my heart that I wish to let go of everything. But I am accepting just for the sole purpose so that that devotee becomes pleased. Because the role of Bhagwan is to please devotees in the same way to give devotees happiness because he has come all the way from Akshardham here on this earth just for the sole purpose of making his bhaktos happy. So we can see in this charitra that Nilgan Verni performed such kind of tap for two and a half months and then Surya Narayan came and, and, and had his darshan and, and Bhagwan asked for a boon and that was it. And then Bhagwan, he finally ended his penance there. And finally he went off and started in his next area, which we would find out in the next lecture. So from this lecture, we can just take that Nilkan Verni, number one, was the Supreme Lord himself, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, due to his credentials we can see here. Number two, the austerities that he performed from the age of 11 to 17 were all for us, were was all for our happiness, was so that we excel in satsang in the future. In saying that, number three, the satpurush that we have met, the satpurush that we are having the darshan of, the satpurush that is speaking to us, that very satpurush also performed such kind of penance tap for us, and he is doing so even as of right now. So now, all we have to do is follow in his commands, fold our hands, and do as he says. By doing so, Nilkan Verni Bhagwan Swami Narin would become happy and take us to our, his Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narin.
वर्णिवे शरमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज नीज सुप्रीम ऑल मै थी अवर बिलव गंसा महाराज पाथमिक कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाद गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू इज जय स्वामी नारायण वी एज अ स्वामी नारायण फॉलोअर वी ऑलवेज चैंट द डिवाइन मंत्र स्वामी नारायण स्वामी नारायण स्वामी नारायण बट हाउ दिस मंत्र ओरिजिनेट एंड व्हाट वाज द हिस्ट्री बिहाइंड दिस मंत्र let we see something read from the scriptures on maxar sud 13 in 7th year 1858 meaning 7 december 1801 ramanand swami passed away at foreign all his disciples lamented for the losses so that was the day meaning 17 december 18 one at that day ramanand swami passed away to aksardham in the village of farani ramanand swami the guru of bhagwan swami narayan at that time all the disciples of ramanand swami they believed ramanand swami was the form of bhagwan himself on the other hand ramanand swami himself he declared i am not the god i am the devotee of lord sri krishna so after his passing away all the devotees all his santos they all lamented because of they believed him as a god himself and that is why they all have sorrowful atmosphere amongst the devotees and santos but before passing to aksardham ramanand swami made a firm decision and made announcement to the devotees that sahajanand swami is on my seat meaning he he is after me who can handle the fellowship and because of that the all of the santos and devotees they believed that sahajanand swami is the now our guru at that time they didn't believe that sahajanand swami is the supreme lord himself so on the 13th day sahajanand swami explained the divine significance of the swami narayan mantra and asked the devotees to chant the mantra he revealed his divine form and the devotees sang bhajan in his praise from then onwards instead of singing the ram krishna govind dhun devotees started singing swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan 14th days after the passing away of ramanand swami on maksar wad 11 meaning on the maksarod ekadashi the day of ekadashi and that was the day of 31st december the devotees requested sahajanand swami to sit on a separate sinhasan all the devotees sat in front of the sadhus and the women sat at a suitable distance so on the 14th day after the passing of ramanand and swami according to our hindu post this uh, rituals 
there was a grand ceremonies there was a grand sabha and in this sabha all kinds of duties all the santos they all gather at one place in forani there the devotees and santos they requested sahajan and swami who is to the next guru after raman and swami of the fellowship so as head of the fellowship they requested to sahajan and swami please sit upon a special seat separate sihasan so sahajan and swami was sat on that sihasan and in front of him all the santos sat in a group uh, after the santos the devotees sat in a group and finally the female devotees they also sat at a suitable distance so that was the uh, that was the uh, sitting position in our satsang even today we follow it first santo then after devotees and finally the female devotees so according to our system all the uh, devotees meaning santos devotees and female devotees they all sat in front of bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan swami narayan himself um, he spoke in the sabha uh, in such a way that no one can have grief of raman and swami's losses remain in one's heart no doubt they all believed raman and swami as the form of god so that's why they all have unbearable pain within their hearts but as sahajan and swami the real form of supreme personality of godhead and because of listening the words from his mouth all the devotees all the santos they experience in their hearts something uh, eternal peace within and because of that they all can sit and listen attentively what sahajan and swami was speaking that was the situation of the sabha on the basis of the shastra sahajan and swami spoke about dharma gnan vairagya and bhakti the four aspect of ekantik dharma and from the beginning he narrated the very definitions of all these four aspect of the ekantik dharma and he put a more stress or we can say he gave more important to these four points of one's life and because of that one can attain the ekantik state which we can say the elevated spiritual state in satsang and after attaining this state one can experience the god himself and that is why sahajan and swami spoke about dharma first sahajan and swami said raman swami appointed me as his spiritual head so now i am your guru therefore listen very carefully to what i say for your benefit and practice in life what i preach for your betterment first he addressed to the sadhus those who were seated in front of him the sadhus should cultivate the virtues of truth compassion austerity purity tolerance nonviolence brahmacharya regular study of the scriptures service renunciation and self control and should be held as atma meaning for sajan and swami he narrated the good qualities or we can say the virtues of the saints which is written in the many many scriptures so according to the scriptures sajan and swami narrated the qualities or we can say the virtues of saints and he himself gave command to all the santos that one have to be have according to this virtuous life and one who cannot be have in such a way that not call as a sadhu a true renunciant and that is why one had to follow these virtues sadhus and householder devotees should worship god abstain from drinking alcohol and should not eat meat so then after he also narrated for the whole assembly and for all the people sajan and swami said do not drink alcohol or do not eat meat they should not harm any living being they should not commit suicide not steal not slander anyone not only that but should never eat what is unsuitable so in this way 
Sajanand Swami, the Supreme Personality, he himself narrated the Dharma for the sadhus, for the householders, and meaning all of his followers. Then he himself narrated the Dharma, meaning rules, for the householders. Householders should observe all the 16 sanskars prescribed by the scriptures. They should always respect the Vedas, Brahmins, Sadhus, and scholars. They should never, they should never cause grief to cows, Brahmins, and duties of God. They should practice charity, morality, and dharma, compassion, and ahimsa in life. They should always keep their thoughts, actions, and speech pure and pious. Many such sermons were delivered by Sahajan and Swami to his devotees. All were drawn towards him. They soon overcome their grief. They perform his puja and place many gifts at his feet. From that day, people started calling Sahajan and Swami by the beloved name of Sriji Maharaj. So that was the first day as Sriji Maharaj sat on a special seat or we can say they become the head of the fellowship. That was his first speech for the devotees. And that was mostly on the following, uh, on the commands to follow the r rules and regulations of the fellowship. So, by his first, step, uh, first speech, we can understand as Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself uh, narrated the Dharma first. So in our life, we also can do the same thing, meaning we also follow the Dharma firmly or without, uh, without forsaking, we should follow each and every rules given to us by Bhagwan himself for us according to our different status, meaning for the renouncing duty, for the householder duties, for the female duties, in this way, Sri Jumara had narrated different different dharmas for all the devotees in the Sikshapatri. We should follow those rules, regulation for our benefit. But we are talking about how Mahamantra Swami Narayan was pr uh, pronounced for the very first time and what was the history. So that was also related to this. Now, a Brahmin called Sital Das was seated in the assembly. He was in search of God. He was from the village of Jarnaparna in North India. Once heard of Raman and Swami's greatness and decided to go to foreign in Gujarat for his darshan. Originally, Sitaldas was from the North India and he didn't know anything about Raman and Swami or any the form of God, but as he was a spiritual seeker, spiritual aspirant, and because of that, he traveled one place to another, and especially he was traveling in places of pilgrimages, and because of that, he found someone who explained him regarding the Raman and Swami's greatness, Raman and Swami's divine power, and that's why he told him that Raman and Swami was worshipped by the thousands of devotees and renunciants, meaning sadhus, as a God himself. So if you want to meet God himself, so you should go to the Gujarat and there you should meet him. After meeting Ramana Swami, your quest for attaining God realization would be fulfilled. So after getting this message, Sital Das himself traveled towards the Gujarat. After entering to Gujarat, he found Ramana Swami was at the time, staying in the village of Farani. So, finding the way, he reached to Farani. But, unfortunately, he didn't have darshan of Raman and Swami. Because, when he reached to Farani, before 13 days, Raman and Swami passed away to Aksardam. And that is why he didn't get chance to have Raman and Swami's darshan. But, as he went to Farani, and disappointed when he learned that Raman Swami had written to Akshardham, so he started lamenting his fate. He decided to return home. But Maharaj said to him, he didn't say to Maharaj that I want to go back to my home, but 
महाराज हिमसाल महाराज only because of his omniscient power he knew about sital das uh, thoughts and because of his, uh, reading his mind maharaj himself said to him stay here for today i'll arrange for the darshan of raman and swami if you wish you can leave tomorrow afternoon then sital das agreed to stay because sital das found that even i did not uh, I did not disclose my desire to meet Raman and Swami to the Sahajan and Swami, and still Sahajan and Swami, he consoled me by saying this: that you should stay here if you want to do Raman and Swami's darshan, and in this way, uh, Sita Das understood little glory of Sahajan and Swami. that something is uh, something greatness remain in this person and that's why believing him a great person he remain there in forani that day sahajan swami asked him to chant swami narayan mantra so bhagwan swami and call him near after the assembly was over uh, sahajan swami himself in white sital das to come near and as sital das went near to sahajan and swami then sahajan and swami gave him this mantra swami narayan for the very first time and in this way bhagwan swami himself has given this mantra to all the devotees on the other hand when we found in the history in the history there is no any form of god meaning there is no any avatar who had produced any particular mantra for the benefit of devotees most of the mantras in the vedic scriptures most of the names of god that was not given by god himself but most of the mantras and name of gods they were given by the rishis and the devotees of god but this swami narayan mantra is only unique mantra in the world which was given to us by bhagwan himself while ch- chanting the mantra as maharaj told him to chant the mantra repeatedly and sital das began to chant swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan but as soon as sital das began chanting swami narayan a miracle occurred by sri ji maharaj's grace he went into samadhi and experienced the divine bliss of god when sita das came out of samadhi he narrated his divine experience that maharaj was seated on a lustrous throne in the divinely luminous akshardham ram krishna and all the avatars and even raman and swami were standing and offering their prayers to sri ji maharaj i performed maharaj pujan i wanted to perform pujan of all the muktos there however i was only one and there were infinite muktos so when sitalas began chanting swami narayan maha mantra then something happened to him he fell un- like unconscious on the earth and he but he was not died or nothing happened to him his physical body was okay all right but his consciousness meaning uh through his mind and heart he was in divine akshardham that only because of bhagwan swami narayan's divine grace so sitalas went into samadhi and in a trance what he had experienced that was the divine bliss or we can say the divine light one cannot uh, even measure the mass of divine light that in the midst of divine light there was a divine throne and on that divine throne bhagwan swami narayan the f- same form he was faced he was sitting in front of at forani the same form of sahajan and swami seated in the divine uh, throne of akshardham so he immediately understood that this is the sahajan and swami and after that he found the different different miracles which he never even believed never he had even think for such kind of situation and that was 
Lord Sri Ram, Lord Sri Krishna, and all 24 avatars, they were sitting, uh, they were standing in front of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, meaning Sahajanan Swami in Divine Abhara Vaksardham. They were praying while folding their hands. They, they were all were praying to Sriji Maharaj. That was the scene Sitalas had seen in the Samadhi. And there he also found Raman and Swami. Raman and Swami was also praying to Sriji Maharaj. He was also standing in front of Sriji Maharaj while folding his hands. And then he understood the glory of Sriji Maharaj, but not fully. Now, there, besides these uh, 24 avatars of God, also the Raman and Swami, there were many, like countless millions of divine muktas also stay there in Aksardham. So after doing their darshan, Sitalash desired to worship the form of God as well as all those divine muktas. But, as it is written here, his own experience, he, Sitalas was narrated to, uh, Sitalas was narrating to the devotees and santos in the sabha. He said, I performed Maharaj Pujan and I wanted to perform Pujan of all the muktas. However, I was only one and there were infinite muktas. So it was, uh, Sitalas was thinking in Aksardam that now it is not possible for me to perform the Pujan of all these muktas. But, at that point, Sriji Maharaj suggested, Sitala said, Sriji Maharaj suggested to me, make a wish that if Ram, Krishna, Raman and Swami or any avatar is the supreme God, Par Brahm, Purnapur Sotam, then may I assume infinite forms so that I can perform Pujan of the infinite muktas simultaneously. As Sriji Maharaj suggested to him, immediately Sital Das recite, recited this in his mind, but nothing happened. Then, as proposed by Maharaj, I made a wish that if Sriji Maharaj is Supreme God, Purana Pursottam, then may I have assume infinite forms and perform Bhujana of the infinite muktas at the same time. So as soon as I repeated this in my mind, Sitala said to the assembly, as soon as I repeated this in my mind, I saw infinite forms of myself and I simultaneously performed pujan of all the muktas. At that time, Raman and Swami explained to me, Sahajan and Swami is God himself, the cause of all the causes, the cause of all the avatars, and we are his devoted servants. So what Raman Swami told to Sital Das, he explained that same words of Raman and Swami to the devotees of Raman and Swami on the earth. So beautiful was Aksar Dham and so repentant was Maharaj, incredible, indescribable, because no one can uh, no one can have any kind of such kind of uh, imagination in one's mind because there is no any single object on this earth which we can say like this is like the object in Aksardam. No one can compare anything of the Aksardam with the any worldly things. So the uh, divine abode of Aksardam is mostly beyond our imagination. The entire assembly was spellbound by Siddhala's words because they all believed Ramanan Swami as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But as they all listened from Siddhala, as he was narrating his experience, many of the devotees also desired to, went to, the, uh, desired to go to the Samadhi and experience the Aksardham. Immediately, Sriji Maharaj himself, as requested by the devotees and santos, Sriji Maharaj gave command to all the devotees and santos to begin chant Swami Narayan Mahamantra. And from that day, all the devotees, santos, everyone in this fellowship, they began to chant Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, instead of any other mantras. So, convinced of Sriji Maharaj's greatness, all the 
sadhus and devotees they also experience the samadhi only because of swaminar and mahamantra only because of the chanting of mahamantra and then convinced of sri ji maharaj's greatness siddhas also decided to take sadhu diksha from sri ji maharaj and on that same day sri ji maharaj initiated him and named him vyapkanand swami so this was the history of divine mantra swami narayan and we should also chant swami narayan maha mantra as many time as we can do in in a day why because the glory of swami narayan maha mantra was written in the scriptures in hari lamrut by vi hari lal ji maharaj the very pious acharya of vartal he had written the glory of swami narayan maha mantra in the scriptures and according to those scriptures there is also in other scriptures it is written the maha mantra swami narayan's glory that whoever attain uh, whoever chant only once swami narayan maha mantra with understanding full glory then not a single sin remain in one's life merely by chanting god's name the holy name or we can say the mantra swami narayan that was the glory of swami narayan maha mantra and we should keep in our mind not only celebrate the 31st december as the last day of the year or not for the welcoming the next year the new year but we should also celebrate the day of 31st december as the birth day or the original day of swami narayan maha mantra by saying this my humble jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharajani jai shri patim shri dharam sarvadeveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakandham bhaj shri ganeshyam maharaj